finally recognize that the that there's a big lie being told in a lot of different versions, a lot of different ways. It's being told in the way we communicate with one another. It's being told in media. It's not a big conspiracy either. It's not like some kind of conspiracy theory to control people or to make you miserable or it doesn't have to do with aliens or anything like that. It's just, uh, it's just a collective hypnotic effect that being identified with thought and mind uh, has. But it's very powerful. Do you remember growing up and realizing all of this was a lie? I do. I remember sometime around adolescence or maybe a little while after adolescence, I realized that all the things that I had been told by adults, by parents, by society, there was something wrong about it. There was something just wrong with it. There was something inaccurate. I'm not sure if I could fully put my finger on it, but I know that what came with that recognition was a really uncomfortable feeling, like an emotion, some kind of sense of helplessness or a sense of fear. Because like, if all of this isn't real, if all of these people who are acting like they're okay are not really okay and they're burying it, then what's really going on? How am I going to figure out what's going on? How am I going to learn to live in a way that feels real, that feels accurate, that feels honest, that feels not like repressed fear? I think in retrospect, what I actually sensed in people was repressed fear. And I also remember noticing, although I don't know how consciously I noticed this, but it was in my processing. Like it was, It was kind of built into the thoughts. I could see this happening, that there was part of the messaging that I was getting about how to be in the world, how to act in the world, what was important, what was going to make you happy. I could see that in that messaging, there was this other hidden messaging that was like, and don't question this. And if you find that it's not true, don't talk about it. Pretend it's true. It's okay to just pretend. Like I could sense all this and I could sense people around me doing it. And it seemed to work for them, at least most of them, as far as I could tell. I don't know what they were thinking. I wasn't inside their mind. I wasn't feeling what they were feeling. Now in retrospect, I think many people actually did feel that. Many people felt that sense of something's wrong with this, but let me find a way to go deeper to sleep so I can avoid feeling the the, the emotion that comes with realizing this is a lie. Like so much of what we're talking about as far as how to be a human, be a good person, do the right thing, believe the right beliefs, it's not true. There's something really off about it. And uh, learning like, okay, when you don't want to feel that, here's what you do next, right? It's okay. We all go through that. Here's what you do. You build this other identity on top of that. And largely it's an identity of seeking. It's an identity of trying to get to the next thing, get to the better thing, get to the bigger thing, get to the next life milestone, let's say. And these come in all varieties. It can be the milestones of your personal life, having children, having a relationship, having a career. They could be other kinds of milestones, including spiritual milestones, getting to the next level of whatever, <laughs> enlightenment or finding the perfect teacher or getting into the in crowd in a spiritual group or circle or something, right? It doesn't actually matter what the story is. The seeking is what was taught to us somehow. That when you feel uncomfortable, it's okay, just seek something later right? Overlook. It's like you're actually taught to overlook how you're feeling right now. <laughs> it's you're taught to overlook the fact that you're feeling really uncomfortable by going into your mind and seeking. And there's only one place you can seek, really. There's only one place you can do this, and that is in the mind. And so what happens is our attention goes into the mind, into thoughts, and starts to actually distance ourselves from the emotions. We start to distance ourselves from the feeling that something's off, that something's wrong. It doesn't mean that those feelings go away. What happens though is the mechanism gets revved up. It gets a lot of momentum. And that's why people notice thought after thought after thought. There's so many thoughts. Some estimates are like 
80,000 thoughts a day or 20,000 thoughts a day, depending on how you define it, of course. But the point is, we notice this. We notice all the anxiety, all the depression. Why? Why is all that happening? Well, the reason it's happening is because we've learned to use the mind. There's nothing wrong with the mind fundamentally, but we've learned to use it to avoid that fundamental sense that something's not right. And of course, I come along and I tell you, no, 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 no. Go back. Go back and see that something doesn't feel right. Embrace the fact that something doesn't feel right. It's okay to feel that. And it's scary. It's scary the first time you recognize, oh shit. Not only do I sense that something's not right, something isn't right. Something's not right with the way we're talking about being people, <laughs> the way we were talking about being separate, being individuals in a separate life with a whole bunch of other separate individuals in their own separate lives. Like there's something really off about that. It doesn't feel right. It feels really uncomfortable, right? So I'm saying, go back, go back to that. Touch into it. It's okay to feel the discomfort because that's really the beginning of trust. Because before that, the only thing you trust is your own ego. The only thing you trust is the the uh, elixir <laughs> that is that has been handed to you that says, go to sleep, go to sleep, go to sleep. If you're uncomfortable, go to sleep. Drink this elixir of time that says, oh, in the future, you can be this. In the future, you can get that. And the more you drink, the more you realize, oh God, even when I get those things, I still don't feel good because I keep seeking more. That's okay, just take another drink. Take another drink of that magic elixir, right? The more you drink, the worse you feel. But every time you take a drink, you can, for just a moment, forget that you're feeling that way. Does this sound familiar? Like an intoxicating substance? Because it is. Intoxicating substances, alcohol, you know, marijuana, if you use that way, any kind of intoxicating su substance, opioids, those aren't in and of themselves evil. They're just molecules that have effects. What they are, though, is they are an external and sort of amped up version of the internal avoidance mechanism that we use. That's all they are. They're just ways to do it more efficiently. But the primary issue is a thought-based issue. And that's really good news, right? The addiction to thought, the addiction to seeking, the addiction to avoidance is the fundamental addiction. All other addictions just stem from it. So it's good news because no matter what your addiction is, get to the root addiction, address that directly, and you're getting somewhere, yeah? So this is finally recognize, finally recognize that, the, that there's a big lie being told in a lot of different versions, a lot of different ways. It's being told in the way we communicate with one another, it's being told in media. It's not a big conspiracy either. It's not like some kind of conspiracy theory to control people or to make you miserable or doesn't have to do with aliens or anything like that. It's just, uh, it's just a collective hypnotic effect that being identified with thought and mind uh, has. But it's very powerful. Uh, we can go back and recognize that's happening. First of all, that's called recognition of our own dissatisfaction or suffering. That's the first step. The good news is when you take that step and you realize, okay, yes, I am feeling stuff. Something is off. And I've been using the seeking to avoid recognizing that. I've been using this fantasizing to avoid recognizing that. I've been, I've been using my mind over and over and over to keep, keep that thought stream ramped up. I've been contributing to it. And now I know it's actually avoidance. It doesn't feel good to avoid, right? Once you recognize that, it's kind of like you reverse the whole thing. Now you go back through the suffering and you, you, you can look around and see, well, well, okay, well, if something's way off here, what is it? What's way off? What is it that's way off? What is the big lie we're telling each other, right? And if you watch my channel, you know that there's sort of a series of lies that we tell ourselves <laughs> that create this hypnosis. And we can undo that. We can break those spells that bind one by one. And we start with investigating in a very direct way the nature of your own identity and the nature of thought, because they are one and the same, essentially, in this initial investigation, seeing how identity is tied into thought, seeing how we derive the sense of identity from thought. When you see that clearly, you have a chance of breaking that first spell. And that's how this all starts, this unbinding process. And it turns out there's very good news here that it's okay to recognize that something feels way off because something is way off in the way we normally process. The good news is once you're honest about that with yourself, you have the opportunity to see what's off.
to see it clearly, see the mechanism. And then there's really good news buried in that. Really good news. Uh, what a gift to realize, no, you're not actually here to suffer like that. That's not the only way of experiencing reality. Definitely not the only way. It's the most common way, but it's a way that causes a lot of suffering, a lot of anxiety, requires a lot of thinking, requires a lot of energy in the head, leads to stress, leads to burnout, leads to violence, all of it. You can see that's not the only way. It's just the common way. So what is the other way? What is the other opportunity, other choice, the other possibility? There are many ways to approach this. I have playlists on this. Basics of Awakening is one to start with if this is new for you. Uh, awakening approaches if you really are ready to like hit it. Uh, and I'll also say it, it is a little different for everyone, for sure. There are different approaches for everyone. But the one approach that doesn't work is to go back to sleep. To just convince yourself that what I'm saying is not actually true. Right. It's either true or it's not, but you got to trust yourself for that. Tr check in with yourself. Is what I'm saying true? Is that suffering there? Does something feel wrong about the way we perceive ourselves and the way we, we talk about perceiving ourselves and the way we talk about being a person and how to function in the world and all of it? And it gets multiplied into all kinds of discussions, right? Political discussions, religious discussions, all the you know, in, in, interfamilial discord that comes up, arguments, all this, it's all based on the same fundamental misperception that I'm talking about. Those are just side effects. So if that feels real to you, if that feels right, then you're in a good place. Be honest about it with yourself. And that's 90% really of orienting toward that first insight, that first shift that I'm talking about. It really does start the ball rolling. It, it, it brings resources to your aid that you can't see right now. So trust yourself, trust your instinct for once, instead of the delusion, the collective hypnotic delusion of self and other, of suffering, of time, all of it, right? Of separation. Just set that aside for a minute. Trust your own, <clears throat> excuse me, trust your own instinct, trust your own intuition. Yeah, that's all I'm saying. Uh, see where that leads you. You might be very surprised.